And welcome back to the Constitutionals Podcast. I'm your host, Chad White. If you didn't know, this is a premiere podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there. Here we are, episode 231 of the Constitutionals. I'm trying to fill the air as I roll up the sleeves on my button-up shirt. Look at me, the hottest dad in his favorite button-up shirt with a diver's watch. And uh, what else? What else? What else is a dad like? Uh, his hydro flask bottle next to him. Here we are. Uh, let's get into this. The show that is the Constitutionals. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Uh, well, here we are. Post. Post. Um, I was gonna say field day. Post uh, uh, Super Bowl. Wonderful game. Very fun to watch. Lots of crypto stuff. That'll be the topic of this week's news time. That I will do after I do this and after I do work. So here we go. Here's the first story. This one comes from Variety, written by Jennifer Moss. Paramount Plus programming chiefs on Showtime, standalone future, more South Park in 1883. Now this is a very interesting uh, piece that I, I saw earlier, and I this is this is from two weeks ago, I believe, because I was going to do one last week and I did not. So this is a two-week-old story, but I thought it was interesting uh, to say the least in that. There the, now the emphasis is on uh, for 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 these streaming services for these platforms for these companies that decided to to have multiple platforms. Uh, they see it working for Disney in in a little bit of the sense. You know, Disney Plus is obviously the attraction, but uh, Hulu was is you know the proto streaming service, and then uh, ESPN Plus is while it's an add-on to essentially it should be treated as an add-on nobody should subscribe to espn plus by itself it's a i treat it as an add-on to hulu <laughs> and that's it i don't open espn's app to to watch anything because that app sucks uh and 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 a lot of the espn stuff is actually now like some 30 for 30s some of their uh family friendly i guess sports content is i did that unironically is making its way over to disney plus which I think, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, attention has been paid to Hulu and like its place because it's in this middle gray area where it has all of the hard R and hard PG thirteen stuff that should not live on Disney Plus. Uh, speaking of which, the uh, the the Netflix Marvel series are leaving uh, Netflix. <laughs> They're leaving Netflix. Be, so I I fully believe that those should go to Hulu rather as opposed to um, uh, Disney Plus, but because there's no room for it, there's no room for Jessica Jones talking about sexual assault on Disney Plus. Disney Plus is, and I mean by their own trappinations, trappinations, machinations, they've been they've trappings actually. They've been they they dubbed themselves the family friendly version, uh, you know of of you know, and while Hulu has everything else, so I mean besides. What what is that movie? I have this movie. I own this movie. The Ernie Davis story. That that movie. I believe that be, like movies about race, those are the only things that'll have any type of, you know, curse words in them. Uh mostly racial slurs. Uh but you know, Disney fans, Joe Rogan fans, they're one and the same. So. <laughs> anyway, uh so so these so these these streaming services, companies with multiple platforms, I believe they're going to be, they're going to, you know, if they, if they don't compare themselves to each other, which they obviously will do, they're going to find a way to survive. So with that in mind, Paramount Plus can, while it does have some Showtime uh, shows and movies and uh, vice versa, Showtime does have some Paramount Plus stuff, I think they can live you know, side by side with each other because uh, Showtime, while it's not HBO itself, it it does have it does carry similar weight, uh, if not the same. And and you know, it's uh, the Vi- Viacom CBS probably sees that the same way because uh, the president of original scripted series Nicole Clemens over here again in this Variety article that I started talking about four minutes ago, <laughs> written by Jennifer Moss said that uh, she believes that they are complementary. Did somebody just knock? 
And I think, and she thinks that there's going to be some overlap in Venn diagram, which, which there is there. Oh God. What is that movie? The, uh, the movie about with Kristen Bell and Ker- Kirby Howell Baptiste. Um, also I think it's Kristen Bell. Uh, did I say Kristen or Kirsten? Oh God. <laughs> and, uh, let's see that movie, which I watched, which was great, except for the fact that, uh, Paramount Plus's 4k Adobe streaming is just screwed up. It's just truly screwed up. Queen Pins. Queen Pins was, and Halsey was in that movie. Uh, Queen Pins uh, was, is now, is also on Showtime, even though it's a Paramount Plus original. And also Paramount Plus offers, you know, Star Trek stuff, while Showtime offers, you know, Deces and Miro. Halo could not live on Showtime, even though that's, you know, before streaming, that's probably where it would have gone had, uh, had, you know, streaming not been in, around yet. But now Halo can go to Paramount Plus because that's going to be the thing. I mean, it fits it fits over there. They don't Showtime doesn't have really sci-fi things, sci-fi, sci-fi shows. But Paramount Plus can be the home for all this uh, nerdy, geeky stuff because it's got Star Trek and the franchises. It's got, you know, the Fatal Attraction. I think they're making a show. The Good Fight spinoff. That's not Star Trek. That's, <laughs> that's nothing to do with Star Trek. But still, you get it. You can buy them in a bundle together for $12 per month, Showtime and Paramount+. Plus. And then, oh, then this also not to mention that the, they own Pluto, which is the free streaming channel guide. And you can watch a Star Trek only channel. And I mean, obviously it's ad supported, but it's still, it's still nice to see. Uh, Paramount Plus and Showtime OTT added 4.3 million global subscribers, raising their combined total to 47 million. Obviously that does not compete with that and, and and they had a they had a Paramount Plus, which was CBS All Access, had a great head start ahead of HBO and HBO Max, but now HBO HBO Max ended twenty twenty one with seventy three point eight million global subscribers. And again, these numbers are are uh, messed with because they're combining cable subscribers as well as regular the streaming subscribers. So that's the world we live in now. Now, speaking of more streamers, Tim Cook, this comes from Variety, again, the, the VIP Plus Variety Intelligence Program. Andrew Wallenstein, or Wallenstein. Tim Cook, I was, at, I was getting a haircut a couple of weeks ago, and, uh, and my guy was talking to me, and, uh, and he started talking to me, you know, he, <laughs> I try, <laughs> I, I, I don't like, uh, conspiracy theories. I don't like any of that stuff. And obviously, uh, barbers tend to, to live in that world. And and then he just started yelling at me about it. He's like, when I was a kid, it was Bear Stain Bears. And I feel like, and I and I in my head, I was going, is it 2016? <laughs> Why is this conversation still going? <laughs> when I was a kid, it was Bear and Stain Bears. Now it's Bear and Stein Bear and Stain. I was like, I was like, dude, you gotta chill out. <laughs> just give me my fifty dollar haircut, and I'll be on my way. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Uh, so, Tim Cook, they, this uh, Mr. Andrew Wallenstein wrote about Apple TV Plus and how uh, they, Apple, as well as mostly Tim Cook, Apple CEO, kind of shrouded the mystique of this, uh, this subscriber count, how well Apple TV Plus is doing or how unwell it is is not doing. Apple's first quarter results last week were so eye-popping, he writes, hauling its highest revenue ever for a single quarter that Cook's entertainment strategy really doesn't matter much to a company with a $2.8 trillion market cap. But as meaningless as Apple TV Plus is right now to Apple's bottom line, my ears couldn't help but perk up when he addressed the streaming service in his quarterly exchange with analysis. Now, here's what Tim Cook said. We don't make purely financial decisions about the content. We try to find great content that has a re- reason for being. That's a, that's a very good quote from Tim Cook that I, I assume he <laughs> planned out beforehand. And it's, it's smart of him, really, because Apple TV Plus is not a driver for, uh, for, for oh, God, for, for acquired things. For acquired shows, acquired movies, acquired, you know, whatever. They don't they don't they don't look for friends. They don't look for the office. 
they are going to make their own shows. It's going to have the Apple TV moniker, and that's it. Uh, I, you know, I can see at some point them getting into because now foreign language shows are are all the hits. Uh, Korean shows, Japanese shows, shows from China, uh, German shows, Norwegian, all that stuff. All of that uh, has been driving Netflix. And now I've, the Disney, I think Disney Plus has their first original series from Korea uh, or China. One of those. I think it might be Korea. And then, uh, you know, HBO Max has been buying up stuff from Israel, Turkey, just uh, like amazing things uh, that are, again, acquired, but they're putting the name of that on there. But. Apple TV Plus, they're making it on their own. That might be a reference to an 80s, uh, 80s theme song. I, I can't quite pull the show. And here's what uh, Andrew writes. I'm not even sure what he means by, quote, reason for being. Do Netflix shows lack, you know, justification to exist? He wrote the, you know, I didn't say that. I didn't do some editorializing there. As far as financial decisions, maybe he means what he's saying, or maybe he knows full well that's a total crock. If you look at Netflix's numbers, global by December 21st, it was 221.8 million subscribers. Disney Plus is at 196.4. Viacom CBS is at 46.7. HBO Max uh, is roughly uh, 73. Prime Video is 200 million. And, and it, like in Prime, you know, that, that comes with something... <laughs> I don't even think that many people watch Prime, so let's let's not lie about that. But Apple TV Plus is roughly 40 million subscribers. No one knows how many are paying because you do get Apple TV Plus if you buy free for like three months if you buy stuff. You know, and I had this idea. I, this is not an original idea, but I had this idea that if I keep buying, like if I got an iPhone, then I got, you know, AirPods, and then if I get a, a Mac, and they come with free Apple TV and uh, Apple TV Plus, I should be able to use that on myself because I still paid, you know, $2,000 for a laptop. I should be able to go, they should be able to give that to me and I'm still subscribed and I'll still keep watching. I shouldn't have to pay the $5. That's what, that's what should happen. And, you know, put it like, you know, it's uh, f- from, from, you know, 250 up. So anything that costs 250 up. So anything, so if you buy it, like I bought this, this Mac mini, I should be able, I should have gotten free Apple TV plus for another year. Just like when I got the friggin' iPad. So stupid. The market reality, Andrew writes, is that even if Apple TV Plus isn't doing well enough for Apple to share data confirming that, the streaming service's rivals must remain on high alert. While it's highly unlikely Apple TV Plus is near achieving an audience that puts it in the same competitive tier as streaming performers, uh, top performers, Netflix, Disney Plus, Prime Video, Cook has the means to change that overnight with an acquisition to Apple as well within the financial means to pull off. That means that Apple could buy, what he's suggesting here, is that Apple could do what Microsoft did with Activision Blizzard or what uh, Sony's gonna, what Sony has done before with other you know, uh, gaming, gaming de- game developers. Uh, what Viacom and CBS did. They, they came back together after years of being apart. What AT&T and Singular did. Singular Wireless. So Apple, so Apple could just as easily go over to Lionsgate and say, we're going to purchase Lionsgate. And, I mean, obviously Lionsgate would have to, it'd have to be consensual. Uh, but, <laughs> but that's what they could do, and they could have their own, an easier way to distribute films because people are going to work with Lionsgate and and Apple together. So Apple TV Plus while not exactly well we don't know exactly what's going on. I it's still doing well enough uh and Apple is keeping their 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 foothold inside of that side of the industry. I mean, but it's the same thing that, you know, Apple TV Plus it's it's you know it's a five dollar payment every month and then that comes and that's that's probably going to go up to eight dollars at some point, but that's going to come with that that comes with things that comes with you buy you buy the laptop you buy the computer that you buy the phone it comes with the things, and and not you don't know if everybody's watching that's like saying um uh an, an, an analyst said that that Peloton you know they have to watch out for for Apple Fitness. Because, you know, it's right there on the watch and you can, you can, all you have to do is just sign in and play it on your TV and you can do the stuff right there. Uh, but, you know, that people have to care about wanting to do Apple TV or Apple uh, Fitness. So people have to want to care about wanting to watch Apple TV Plus. If they already have, if they're not, they're not like me. <laughs> you know, if they already have Netflix and they have Disney Plus, then they're probably set. Uh, 
uh, they're not going to want to get Paramount Plus. Uh, they have HBO Max. They're not going to want to get Showtime or Stars because you can buy Stars by itself. So Apple TV, Apple TV Plus, living in a world where it probably shouldn't exist, but Apple's going to put their triumph behind it, their their hearts behind it. Whereas Google would probably would just stop, like they did with YouTube Premium. And this is the final one for this part of the show. Comes from Wall Street Journal, written by Benjamin Mullen, David Marcellus. Disney Plus, HBO Max, and other streamers get waves of subscribers from must-see content, but keeping them is hard. And it essentially is just talking about how people will sign up for uh, Disney Plus when Hamilton comes out, and they'll 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 you know they'll pay for the month, but then it, it, they find it hard to retain these viewers because. Uh, quite frankly, there's nothing for them else to watch on the service. Like I, I've said this before, and I'll say it again, The Simpsons is on Disney+. Plus. I'm truly paying $8 a month just to watch The Simpsons every single day. Uh, and, I'm, and I have them recorded on uh, TV, but on YouTube TV, but there's no point. Watching on YouTube TV is just... <laughs> Although I love that free DVR. I love that free cloud DVR. Uh, and what Michael Natheson uh, from, uh, I believe he's from the firm of Moffitt and Natheson, which I'm correct. Uh, he suggests that you constantly need new content. Again, his word, not mine. I don't like the word. New. <laughs> Sharing services not only have to build vast libraries of old shows and movies, he said. They also need, quote, a big couple, a couple big Nice theatrical movies every quarter to make it feel like it's really valuable. Now, I don't wholly agree with him on the uh, old shows and movies. Uh, again, I think, you know, with, especially with Netflix rising up uh, $2, essentially, uh, they could really, uh, and the same thing, and Disney Plus already does this, they could just go, they could just take everything off that they acquired and just have Netflix originals all across the service. I think that, would, I think that focus on that would be much better than them trying to go around and say we got to get friends we got to get the office because you don't really need that if you if you can make uh shows like archive 51 i think that's what it's called and and you can acquire the rights to uh to make the new to new make new pokemon shows and put out new pokemon movies whereas disney won't want to do that uh so so like i said hamilton disney plus saw the hamilton daily signups the signups for that part of when hamilton came out just skyrocket and it just leveled off especially at way after that uh and then in i mean in some cases it went <laughs> went down uh same thing for hbo max when wonder woman 1984 came out december of 2019 or excuse me december of 2020 and apple tv plus same thing for the movie greyhound starring uh, Tom Hanks, who refuses to star in movies with people of color. <laughs> look at it. Look at his Wikipedia page. I'm just saying. I'm just joking. I'm joking. I like him a lot. So, so even if uh, streaming services only retain half of the users they sign up during big bursts, that still translates to, into sizable numbers of longer term subscribers. 9,000 people could sign up, and 3,000 could just keep the service either by forgetting or just continuing to use it. So you'd, you'd rather see signups. First of all, they'd rather see signups and sustained signups. But any point, signups, period, works. Uh, Peacock tried to do the same thing for Winter Olympics. It did not really work out for them in their favor. Uh, they did have signups, but no one truly pays for Peacock after the fact. And I, you know what? I can probably even I can even uh, c confirm this. They probably don't even have that many signups for this current for the Winter Olympics. They saw that for the Summer Olympics was the signups and everything, but which obviously helps their profit margins by saying, "Hey, we had 200 million signups, but it's there's a free part of the service, there's a five dollar part of the service, there's a ten dollar part of the service, and you know those those only amount to so much." American households subscribed to 3.6 streaming services on average last year. <laughs> well, some of them subscribed to all of them. <laughs> or a majority of them. <laughs> and they're all fighting for the same market share. Just like cable was fighting. And streaming services, they're all, they're all looking for, you know, to be a part of that pie. To get a piece of that pie. Mr. Natson said the cost to build, the cost to market, and the cost to retain customers will uh, all be going up in a competitive market. Originals, acquisitions, that's what they're working for. How do you attract new viewers? Hulu 
every year they have they have deals where you can buy a year for like 50 bucks or 60 bucks hbo max for new subscribers generally well no you can if you buy annual and you're a current subscriber you also get some time some money off some time off <laughs> yeah it's like just like going to jail going to prison you get time off for a good behavior U.S. viewers who signed up for Netflix when Big Mouth and Mank came out, uh, and for Hulu ahead of the four season Handmaid's Sale, have left a slower have left at a slower pace than the ones signed up for HBO Max, Apple TV Plus, and Disney Plus. Raft releases of their big release, uh, their big names, whatever. Who gives a crap? That's what streaming is. That's what streaming does to us. It just, as long as they have stuff that we like and uh, can can entertain, then we'll be entertained. Listen, listen, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about some more stuff. Just four more stories. Okay. All right. I'm going to go to break. Bye. And we are back. Here we are. Second part of whatever this show is called. The Constitutionals. I know I'm not stupid. All right. <laughs> Here we go. First uh, story. K Bell, written by K Bell over at Engadget. Snap is finally profitable. Snap grows joins a uh, a small list of companies that has become that have become excuse me of unicorns that have become profitable after a couple of years of being public. The company shared the milestone in its fourth quarter earnings release where it reported $23 million in positive net income. The news for our shareholders was particularly welcome as Snap's results came a day after Meta reported that Facebook's daily active users had declined for the first time in history. The resulting stock slide wiped uh, blah, 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 blah. Snap, like Facebook, uh, has said in its past that Apple's privacy changes had negatively impacted its advertising business, with CEO Evan Spiegel calling it a frustrating set setback this last quarter. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, last week during the Samsung Galaxy presentation for the new uh, 22 series of phones, it they uh, they partnered with Snapchat to have to be like one of the few apps with that deal with cameras. Uh, that reach into your, you know, your camera settings, uh, to have them use the full sensor capabilities. Well, whereas I would say, what is it? 2022 now, maybe it was definitely when I was in college. So let's say like 2014, see the Evan Spiegel CEO of Snapchat basically said, Android is trash and you should not use Android phones. And we purposely make our cameras, uh, the, the app bad for Android and iOS is better. It's it's so it's so it's so funny to see how things have changed. Uh, you know, things have changed in the past couple of years for for the Snapchat platform. I don't even I don't know people who use Snapchat. I was talking to a friend at the gym, and she was talking uh, today. And she she mentioned uh, how she hates how she we were talking about social media and how she hates it. And uh, and she and she goes, yeah. She's like, yeah, just you know, Instagram, Snapchat, and I'm just like, you use Snapchat. <laughs> I look a big thing. I'm like, who? Oh, I can't even remember the last time I even logged in. Spiegel says, we built our business with privacy by design at the core of our products, including our advertising program. This is talking about the iOS stuff. As a result, the impacts of the changes that we've seen in the iOS platform are likely to be experienced differently for uh, business that, uh, for business than perhaps for others. He says that they have a long way to go. We are seeing people post fewer stories to their friends, view fewer stories from their friends, but at the same time, we've seen folks watching more premium content, watching more content in the spotlight. There was also a story I saw today where uh, Snapchat said that they were going to uh, put ads inside videos, but they were going to give the money from the ads to the creators of the videos that they post ads into. into. Do you remember Snap Glasses? I wonder if they still make those. Snap Lens, I think that's what it's called. I remember seeing that when I was, I would, uh, and, and, and I just thought, man, I, when I was using Snapchat, I just thought, man, I, I would love a pair of those. I, and now I'm thinking, why would I spend two hundred dollars on connected glasses to Snapchat? Same thing for like connected glasses to Google. No offense to Google, even though, you know, I've got all the uh, speakers in every room 
of this place. Now, continuing on the Snapchat and continuing off the Facebook note with the iOS thing, uh, Alex Heath writes this over at The Verge. Snapchat and Facebook agree that the future of social media looks like TikTok. I forgot to start the timer on this second show. Now I got to look back at the audio and see how long it's been. Friggin' dummy. How long has it been? Like six minutes. Okay. Like six minutes. <laughs> Oh, Snapchat invented the stories format of sharing pictures and videos that disappear. Now the company is indicating, along with Facebook, that the future of social media looks more like TikTok. Now TikTok is a, you obviously know what TikTok is. You post uh, stupid videos with too loud music <laughs> and too loud voiceover uh, and, and, and too hard to read <laughs> captions on an app that you can only access on your phone and not on the internet. That's how inter- that's how Instagram started out, and now uh, you can you can post from barely you can post Instagram to Instagram on your on the web page. Jeez, it is it still sucks to upload a video. I can't even upload C plus comedy stuff on the PC on the desktop. I forgot I forgot what I was using. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. And remarks to investors for his cloridly. Oh, it's a but uh, so TikTok is you know I I watch sometimes. Every couple of months, I'll watch like Vine compilations, and I never got into Vine, uh, but I, I do think a lot of people were creative in their use of Vine. And I think TikTok is a more refined version of Vine, albeit uh, a lot more deadly version, uh, as we have seen with how these kids, you know, blame mental health for using TikTok and the algorithm rhythm and all that stuff. But I, I still I still think TikTok is a is kind of weapon ish in its in its use. For a lot, for a lot of people who don't realize that, but uh, I do know one person that works at Vine, and uh, just hearing hearing <laughs> what they do is, whew. so uh, Snapchat is, it's so I think yeah, TikTok is a more refined version of Vine and Snapchat, and and now everybody is trying to copy Snapchat. Same thing, you know, everybody tried to copy uh, Instagram or Facebook tried to copy Instagram, bought Instagram. Uh, now Instagram's copying what Snapchat's done, and then and then now they they're copying what TikTok's done. Snapchat users are increasingly flocking to watch videos on Spotlight, Snapchat's TikTok rival, for viewing viral videos posted by random creators and its Discover section for premium shows. I remember there was a time uh, before TikTok came to the U.S. or was big in the U.S. rather that Snapchat was partnering with its some of its creators to make premium stuff and I and also as well as you know Comedy Central and and whomever wanted to to join in on the fray whatever other big companies but I don't know what came of that cuz again I never used Snapchat in that way but it was that's that's an interesting thing it's, you know they, they uh, basically another version of YouTube well, Snap hasn't. They're going to do some changes and uh, for the for the community and, and help out and all this stuff. Well, Snap hasn't. I'm just thinking of what Snap does for the, for the community, for the for the uh, for the urban community. While well, Snap hasn't detailed what the changes to its content section will look like yet, it's easy to imagine the tab looking more like TikTok by opening to full screen videos from spotlight creators with the ability to dive deeper into longer Discover shows. Same thing. That's uh, uh, Spiegel, Spiegel highlights some stuff like that. Zuckerberg, CEO of Facebook, a parent company Meta, also identified TikTok as a formidable threat uh, within the same week that Evan Spiegel commented on TikTok. He notices how apps like TikTok are growing faster. And unlike Snap, which is still growing its user base and showing better than expected revenue growth, Meta disappointed its investors, as I had mentioned earlier. And we and we're already seeing stories, you know, Instagram style st- or you know, sorry, Snapchat style stories that are now part of Instagram. But uh, we're seeing those stories make their way over to Facebook, and I don't understand how you would. I mean, I guess you just post the story directly to Facebook. Why? I mean, they should use the photos for Facebook and Instagram should just basically be one and the same. I I understand why they're not, but and to further go into the story, this comes from the Wall Street Journal. Salvador Rodriguez writes, Reels versus TikTok becomes crucial fight for Facebook parent meta. So not only does fa- do Facebook and, and Snapchat see TikTok as a rival, they have to see each other in the same vein. 
TikTok has a, a lot of populated with younger users. Facebook has populated with older users. And switching uh, to Reels, which is what Facebook's TikTok uh, version is, is is hard for uh, both advertisers and creators. And, you know, I mean, uh, oh, if you use Instagram, I see what once were, again, prior to TikTok being big, what uh, and when uh, Instagram stories were coming out, what once were Snapchats made their way not not leaving Snapchat, but both being posted on Snapchat as well as Instagram. And now, whatever's being posted, if you're if you're a creator, you're a, you post on and you use Snapchat, you post on Snapchat. I think that's the cat. You post on Snapchat, and then you take that video, or whatever you post it on Instagram. You take that video, or whatever you post it on TikTok. Now I'm actually saying you do TikTok, Instagram, and I guess Snapchat, and that, and then also Reels in that case. So you're so you're posting on all four, but it's the same video. It's the same thing. Meta launched Reels on Instagram and uh, US, and Reels are different from Stories, I guess. <laughs> Jesus, oh Reels are the things that replay over and over again. Meta launched Reels on Instagram in the US in uh, August 2020 as an answer to TikTok, and then they also did the same thing on Facebook. In 2021, TikTok reaches 63% of Americans between ages of 12 and 17 weekly, up from 50% a year prior. Instagram, meanwhile, declined from 61 in 2020 to 57. Although Meta provides massive audiences of multi-billion monthly users on Facebook and Instagram, advertisers say TikTok offers a way to reach younger users, start trends, and affect culture in other ways that platforms can't. That sentence just made me so mad. <laughs> Affect culture. Get out of town. But it's easy to, I think it's easy to be, it's easier now to be uh, on, on you know, all three or all four of these platforms at once without having to make a decision on which one's going to be better for you. I see, like, uh, now even YouTube stories. Let's throw that into the mix. YouTube has its own Reels competitor. Uh, and TikTok competitor, rather, <laughs> not Reels competitor. No one's like, I gotta get, we gotta take down Facebook Reels. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, but it, it's, you know, it's, I, you can, again, I see TikTok things posted on there and, uh, and, and Instagram things posted on there. It's, it's, it's much easier to, to live on in, in, in all of those worlds at once than it is to say, Okay, I'm going to double down. I'm going to be a TikTok influencer, and then that's it. Because I don't think you can make money enough money from just one. <laughs> Meta has done it before. To fight this, it has most notably duplicated Snap's ephemeral feature in which mod. Yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, and launching in stories format, which provided, uh, which proved popular with users rather. In that instance, however, Meta was going against a much smaller rival that wasn't yet entrenched across the culture. TikTok was huge in um, uh, in China before it came to America. So they're all fighting uh, the same war against each other, and it's just just going to be so much. And we're only going to see the fight get louder, or the fight, like Leon. Leon's getting louder. You see an airplane? That's where that's from. That's a reference, not a joke. <laughs> that's the title of this episode. Okay. And this final one probably should have gone with the streaming part, but I did not uh, 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 look. I dare not look at what's on the schedule. This comes from TechCrunch, written by Sarah Perez. Disney Plus just ran its first test of live streaming in the U.S. Disney Plus last week during the Oscar nominations, which I guess I should have covered, but whatever. I don't really give a crap. Uh, <laughs> Disney Plus live streamed the Oscar nominations. Now, this is not uh, the first time the, the nominations were live streamed. In fact, <laughs> it definitely was nowhere near the first time. They've, uh, they've, they typically stream online on the Oscars website, on YouTube, you know, basically wherever you see it. Uh, but now this is all a part of the culture. And so it's, it was on ABC News Live. It was on uh, uh, everything that, that could live stream, I guess. Maybe even Twitch. <laughs> Oscar, <laughs> you see Oscar speedruns? <laughs> Acceptance speedruns. <laughs> 
That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. Come on. The wider distribution, because uh, they Disney decided to stream uh, the event on oh, uh, Hulu, Apple News, um, excuse me, ABC News Live, and Oscars.com, as well as other places. Uh, the wider distribution helped lessen the burden on Disney Plus because not all live events are tuned were tuned into one platform to watch. The company declined to share what sort of specific plans it may have in store for live streaming on Disney Plus in the future, but acknowledged that it wanted to explore what live content could look like on its platform. And when you have live content, that's going to, again, drive more users. That's why ESPN Plus did so well when it came out, is because people could watch not ESPN proper or ESPN2, but they could watch the extended uh, ESPN networks where you can see basically all of the college uh, sports teams play and and see uh, soccer matches that you couldn't see before and, and cricket matches and, and things like that. Speaking of cricket, Disney also, Disney Plus rather, is doing live streaming of cricket matches in India on Disney Plus Hotstar. So uh, it's going to be... They're they're definitely going to start jumping into uh, into into live streaming more often, and you know I think you know those these the events where they had the uh, the Disney the Disney sing alongs on ABC, uh, I believe that those if should they keep coming along, we're gonna you're gonna see uh, more more options of that happening live essentially live concerts live karaoke sessions where you can sing along. That's just my thing. That's my think. That's my think. <laughs> That's what I think is going to happen. As the test shows, uh, who who wrote this? Sarah Perez says. <laughs> who wrote this? So angry. Live streaming doesn't have to be limited to live sports. There are a number of live events that could make sense for Disney to stream. Especially those events that could be streamed across Hulu, Disney Plus, whatever. Oh, Perez writes that uh, a stream from its popular fan event, the D23 Expo, could could work. You know, everybody has these expos. Uh, I think I've done an episode on the D23 Expo of News Time. I'm pretty sure I have done one. And uh, and you know, so you know, we get live streams of E3, we get live streams of Apple events, we get live stream of Google events, Samsung events. Uh, gosh, what what else? What else have we seen live streams of? Uh, just anyway. I could I could definitely see them do panels for D twenty three Expo and 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 turn that into something that turn that live aspect into something that that really works for them in in, in that favor in their favor. Uh, live streaming is important, especially when it comes to these to these streaming platforms. Netflix has yet to do it, and I think it's going to take sports in order for that to happen. Because now, because now, uh, Amazon Prime's got Thursday Night Football coming into this next football season. I believe they have the rights. They they're the only ones that have rights, uh, and they're sharing it with NFL Network. I believe, um, but it's it that and that seems to do well enough where they and, and they're able to do simulcasts in Spanish and simulcasts with female uh, uh, talking heads as opposed to male ones, uh, which is which which really works because you know. Women can do the same thing that uh, women reporters can do the same thing that men reporters can do, uh, and uh, it's so so. I mean that that's how that works for Prime. And then Hulu, as soon as the Disney acquisition went through, they uh, they were able to they, they now have ABC News Live. There's ESPN stuff works on their live uh, well enough. Uh, uh, HBO Max, I assume, is going to jump into live live stuff. As soon as they get their platform, the tweaks and the the bugs and glitches down just a little bit more, they're definitely going to do some live stuff. So yeah, bring it, bring on the live. Listen, if you want to bring on more stuff, why don't you head on over to the website seedlesscomedy dot com, where you can see me do this sometimes every week, sometimes bi weekly, <laughs> sometimes tri weekly. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram. At C plus comedy, me on Twitter, Instagram at chat black white. If you want to see a video version of this show, I almost forgot to do this. YouTube.com slash C plus comedy. You can see me sit. Some the snacks change behind me sometimes. Uh, I did rearrange everything. 
Everything's been rearranged. Baking stuff is on the bottom. Snacks are on the top. And in the middle are the, uh, are the tools and utensils I cook with that cannot be stored in the kitchen because the kitchen is kind of tiny. <laughs> and <laughs> it's too much information. I got no one to talk to, baby. Uh, and also on youtube.com slash C comedy is the premiere show news time, uh, which is sometimes weekly again, but you'll, you'll definitely get 52 episodes a year. Uh, it's a weekly news show where I, it's like the daily show, except way less funny. I take one topic and I drill right down into it. Like I said, the next episode is going to be next two episodes. Uh, obviously I already planned out, but next episode is going to be about the Super Bowl halftime show. The episode after that's going to be about, um, the uh, Olympics. So there you go. Be on the lookout for that. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Tell your friends, rate, review, subscribe to this podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, you're the best and be masked. Stay safe. I love you. Still life from Seth Myers. <laughs> okay. Oh no, I forgot to, I, I had such a good ending. I forgot to press the thing. Okay.